Oh, oh, jeez. Hey, uh, I had a tour raid. I had a suppression core. Well, how are we going to know the difference? Uh, what is the difference? I don't know. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Bennett. And this is... Soft Magnetics. Hard Topics. What so are we talking about today, Bennett? Toroids versus suppression cores. What about them? Well, what's the difference? They look the same. How am I supposed to tell? Yeah, How I guess, they, to, what I guess they do look kind of the same. They, they look actually identical. Yeah, they do look identical. Um, so, like, is it just a fancy marketing terminology to say the same thing? Kind of. But not really. All right. So, yes, these look identical. They likely were made on even the same piece of press tooling and everything. Um, it's not the actual case with these two, but we can pretend they're the same material. So you'll have five nine cores, two six cores from our part numbering system. Five nine means toroid, two six is a suppression core. Huh. Um, but they're both in the toroidal shape. Yeah, they're both, yeah, they're both a, a, a tube, circle, donut, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they can be the same material. You could have a 5.9, so this is a, a force 3 material, so you could have a 2.6, 4.3, you could mm -hmm. have a 5.9, 4.3. Um, that's 43 material, by the way. Now, they can be made out of the same material, but there's so many different processes in making a ferrite part that will change the performance properties. So if you ever look at ferrite toroids, usually you look at um, specifications such as AL or uh, inductance factor and loss factor. And usually when you're talking about a toroid, the insinuation is that you want a core that is not very high loss and has some certain inductance value. That's generally the properties you're looking for in a toroidal core, and that's how they get specified. Okay. So it will be specified for some inductance factor range, plus minus 20 to 30 percent, depending on the material. And that 20 to 30 percent is, you know, material composition variation, processing parameter variation. It can vary that much. You know, people that are used to things like resistors and capacitors that have pretty narrow tolerance bands, you know, look at these things with 20 to 30 percent and go, whoa. Your process is not well controlled, but that's how it is. It's, you know, you're talking about like PPM levels of, of compositional changes will make big differences. Oh, wow. And that changes the firing process. Hence the big swings. Yeah, hence the big swings. So, toroids are going to be specified into, you know, that inductance factor window and usually to some maximum loss factor. So, we don't want the losses above that at some elevated frequency, but still generally a pretty low frequency. Now, suppression cores, again, they could be the same material, could be made out of the same press tooling and everything, but these are going to be specified to a minimum impedance value. Oh, impedance. And crucially, the that minimum impedance value will be at some very high frequency. So whereas a 43 material toroidal core, we may look at inductance factor at 10 kilohertz. That's generally always measured at 10 kilohertz because it's going off the initial permeability of the material. And the loss factor will be at something a little bit elevated, 100 kilohertz, 1 megahertz, something like that. Um, the really high frequency materials might be 100 megahertz that we do loss factor at. Wow. Now, suppression cores, that same 43 material suppression core, we look at a minimum impedance value starting at 25 megahertz and going all the way up into the 300 megahertz range. The section of the complex permeability you're looking at on those two parts is totally different. So when you're looking at the impedance of a suppression core, you're looking at mu double prime or the lossy part of the complex impedance, mm -hmm. which is way out here in terms of frequency relative to inductance and that loss factor measurement, which are down at really low frequencies by comparison. Now, different things in the firing cycle can make a part pass as a toroidal core, so that inductance factor and loss factor measurement is in spec, and 
it doesn't guarantee anything about that impedance oh. at really high frequencies, and vice versa, right? You can have a 43 material core that has all the impedance in the world at 25 megahertz, 300 megahertz, but maybe the initial permeability of it down to 10 kilohertz is out of spec, lower or high. Um, it actually could be better for impedance than it is out of spec, lower or high. Um, so they're somewhat interchangeable, but they are. You we're... you could buy you know you could buy a 43 material suppression core, yeah, and have it meet the specifications of a toroid. It's no guarantee that it won't. Meet but we're those. not we're not testing it to that spec, right? So it could be out of spec. It could be out of spec. In um, both directions. In both directions, but yeah, and vice versa. You know, if you have a suppression core that you know meets specification here, it could be in spec as uh, you know for AL and, and loss factor, but it also could not be. So, what type of applications would either one be used in? So, for Give me some examples. You know, for like a toroidal core, you may be looking at something like a you know a transformer, inductor, something along those lines. Okay. Um, suppression cores, you may be using that for, you know, well, most ferrites are used in common mode for the most part because they have, you know, bias currents that can saturate them and things like that. So they are used for differential mode applications, but more often they're used for common mode applications because it keeps the, uh, you know, keeps the concerns for bias and saturation, things like that low. Um, but yeah, these could be used as just a regular common mode core over a wire. They could be wound for common mode chokes. Uh, and a so the applications things. are quite different for them. Yeah, and, and you know, people do use toroidal cores specified to an AL and loss factor for common mode chokes. Yeah, um, but but it, you have the option of, of either. Right, and we have this. We have the spec for the common for the choke properly if it's an imp impedance rated one. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be using the part for an impedance device, you know, an impedance source, then, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to go for a core that's spec for impedance. Well, that clears it up for me. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you guys next time from the TV Rhineland Technology and Innovation Center in, in Boxborough. Boxborough, not Boxborough. Not to be confused with Boxborough, but Boxborough.